Have you ever been running around the TF2 map and found a nice spot to ranch your relaxo and only to be blocked by an invisible wall? Well, I've had that happen way too many times and I've decided to go on a quest to remove every single invisible wall from, well, just a couple Team Fortress 2 maps, um, but it's gonna be interesting. So before I actually get into looking at the TF2 maps, I want to talk a little bit about what I changed specifically, uh, because not everybody is familiar with how the hammer editor works. So first of all, I removed every single invisible wall straight up, which includes the clip and player clip brushes. Usually those are the ones that just, like, it looks like you should be able to go through it, but you can't. Um, that's what those are. I also decided to remove a lot of windows and gates that are like blocking off specific little side rooms just to see what would happen. So anywhere on the map that you can see, you should be able to go. I also made everything on the map visible at once. Now this does take a big hit on performance, um, but it does allow me to kind of see what everything looks like if the map is opened up completely. So that includes the skybox brushes that aren't uh, blocking off the void, uh, occluder brushes, area portal brushes if you know what you're doing in Hammer, uh, those are all gone. I don't know if that causes many more issues, but, um, we'll see, I guess. Finally, Team Fortress 2 likes to do something called a no-draw texture on surfaces that you wouldn't normally be able to see. Basically, just helps the map run a little bit smoother. I have decided to texture those just so it doesn't look like we're running around in the middle of nothing and to make everything a little bit less, uh, weird when you go into the unintended areas of the map. So with that being said, let us get into the maps that I have selected. So I'm gonna load these maps in order of what I I think makes it the least wacky to the most wacky when all the invisible walls are gone, and let us start out with CTF2 for it. This is a map that was made early on in uh, Valve's development cycle, and um, as such has a lot of kind of hidden areas that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see um, had everything not been kind of fixed up this way. So let's start out in the middle of the courtyard, and you can see that everything just looks very weird. Um, it's just, it's, it's almost uncanny, but it's extremely open, and because there's there is no longer this little fence here. I also, by the way, went ahead and removed all the, like, fences and, um, any, like, props that may be solid that prevent you from doing stuff. Um, but yeah, you can just straight up walk out of the water up onto the land, which makes, uh, the dynamic of the mid-area change. Uh, quite a bit. Now, red side and blue side are quite a bit different in terms of uh, the main differences between their upstairs areas, so I'll do them one at a time. Um, but the mid area, just because of the lack of uh, fence stuff, and I think... Can you actually uh, completely go around here without having to rocket jump? Yeah, you actually can. So that makes it so you don't actually have to take the bridge. So it's a nice little way to avoid snipers. Now, blue side has this nice little coverage thing. There used to be a train here. I guess, I don't know why it's gone, it wasn't like actually impeding anything, so there should be a train there. Um, the, the process that I did is, is a little bit imperfect, but um, yeah, it's kind of cool how mid just looks like pretty much the same, but like you just look at it and you just are filled with dread because something is wrong. Or maybe not, I don't know. And then the counterpart to the little awning on blue area on red is you have this like thing here and you can see this is the texture, um, the, the little gray grid that all of the uh, unviewable textures normally have been replaced with. So another major difference that is affected is that you can now, instead of just having to go through the uh, little top area um, or you have to go through the bottom doors here, you can actually rocket jump on top of this and just walk all all the way back to the uh, the main courtyard area and the courtyard areas are both wildly different on red and blue and they open up a bit but I'll get to that in a second right now I'm more interested in the fact that because there are little holes here it's a whole lot harder to camp this uh, upstairs uh, the barn room I actually don't know what you call these areas on each side but they, they are a lot harder to be camped just because you can either go over them or you could uh, just jump on top and like shoot stickies down onto the sentries in there. And I believe it's a little bit easier to do on red side than it is blue. Let me actually make sure. Because um, I, was, I was like looking at this map in particular in the editor a bit and um, it was asymmetrical. Yeah, on blue side it's like you only have one angle and it is a bit wider but uh, red is a little bit more open. Um, 
But yeah, being able to just kind of skip the spots that are normally being camped by sentries and go just kind of straight to the back is a really neat feature, and I think actually 2 Fort would benefit a whole lot from making this particular change. So like I said, we're going to do the maps one at a time. First of all, let's go on to Red Side. Red Side, because it is a little bit more of a, um, I guess, rural aesthetic, uh, has a little bit more of this, like, angled barn roofs, and you'll see that a lot in, like, some of the maps, is like, yeah, blue is just perfect cubes, and red is like these weird things and like the red is usually a little bit better in terms of what's open because it's not like everything being blocked off by a massive cube um, but yeah, going down into the courtyard area here, since there are no fences and this should not be a thing, I did my best, uh, but some some of the like floating light props are still here. Uh, but yeah, the, the removal of the fences and the invisible walls that um, accompany them kind of allows you to just go all the way back into these like weird areas. I, I don't know what's going on back here. You're obviously not really supposed to be able to see from this angle, so not a ton of interesting details put behind here. Um, but the fact that you have like this much more square footage, like you... Yeah, you pretty much multiply the size of this room by about four, which is, makes it really, really interesting because um, I think it, in terms of, like practical changes, not a lot is different, but being able to explore around, it's a whole lot more interesting. A neat change that I do believe is on both sides, but um, I know I'll look at red side right now as you can just kind of rocket jump and go up on this little shelf. I'm not sure really much would change from this. You might be able to put a sentry here and have it immune to the, um, the, the peeping soldiers from on top of the roof. Moving on to blue side, I showed this off a little bit earlier, but um, you can just go up and over. It's a little bit harder because it does, or, yeah, there's like not as much of an angle that you have and you have to make a second rocket jump to get up here, which I mean doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it is just like less health that you have going in. Um, you can stand on this vent, which would make a really cheesy sentry spot. I mean, this can see all the way over this courtyard, and it can, like, kill the people who are trying to come up and over. Um, <clears throat> I think blue side ends up being a little bit easier to defend because of that, and because, like, up here, I think it's arguably a better sentry spot than, uh, the barn that was on red. But then blue does also have, it's kind of invalidated because of this wall here, um, but, like, it has this, like, shelf... Which, <laughs> I don't know what it would be serving, but it's like a perfectly flat, standable area, which never really hurts to have. Now, as I was looking at this map in the editor, one thing that really stood out to me was how far back they actually made the blue side go in terms of like the outside area of the, uh, the courtyard. Like, this would be a killer-friendly spot for servers that allowed that, um, since that's just way out of the way of anything else, and you have to, like, actively look for people back here, since there's so much just random cover and stuff. And you can see, like, the farther back I go, the more gray grids there are, and I mean, again, it's just, you never really were supposed to be able to see the map from this angle, but, um, being able to see it was kind of cool, and I'm actually kind of glad that I ended up texturing the, uh, untextured stuff normally, because it adds, um, a little bit more knowledge to the thought process that Valve was kind of doing when they were making stuff. Anyway, now let's go down into the basement areas. From what I remember, the basement areas are identical. Oh, wait. One more area before we go down. And then the last area that's of, like, any significance is up here. Just a neat little nook and cranny that you can cram yourself in. Alright, now let's go down into the basement, and I'm 90% sure the basements are completely identical for each side, so I'm not gonna show them both off. Um, but there is some really interesting stuff that happens as you get down into the basement, and wow, I actually didn't know this was an area, that's kinda cool. So going down the big stairs, you're gonna notice immediately that there's a lot more random areas areas that you can be and first of all is in this little information desk and actually this is interesting because you can't crouch under here completely uh, but let me no clip in and uh, you can see that there's just like a little hallway and that's really all that there is in here um that's interesting, I actually thought you could crouch jump through that, so uh, maybe if someone made this for real, they would open that up. But walking back into the intel room, there's a whole lot that's different. This entire area, not only is it open, it's pretty much impossible to see if anybody's in here, because you can stand directly inside these terminals. And this is like a massive benefit for engineers, because they can just cram a dispenser into really any one of these terminals, and nobody's going to be able to see where it is. Um... So if an engineer was, like, setting up down here, this would be a really, really good room for him. And then as you get back into the intel room, I mean, 
these changes that I've made of removing like all of the glass windows and doors and stuff, it just makes it an absolute pain in the ass to cap anything. So let's look at all of the cool new sentry spots you can exploit. So first of all, there's the server terminal room number seven. There's not much in here. I guess you have a coffee maker now. Um, this room, there's really not much of a difference between, like, putting a sentry in here and putting it in the back corner. In fact, I'd still probably argue that this corner is better because it has a little bit more of a sight line. Um, but it's still, like, you could put a dispenser back here and, like, inside of one of these, and it's a little bit more easily accessible if you're camping the intel. You also have this little table display room, which is up here, and, um, it's kind of nice because it protects you from, like, rolling grenades, and it's just really having a high ground with the sentry is always a benefit. Um, but this is objectively better than putting it, like, down here because, again, like, it's a little bit safer because, um, it's harder to hit, and you have the high ground, and you can also just put a dispenser or a teleporter or something back in this little corner. Corner and it makes it really really easy to just consistently defend and then finally you have what I think is my favorite spot which is up here it's a little tricky to get to but up here is like an evil sentry spot like you can't see the sentry at all until you're completely in the room but the sentry can like have entire coverage of the intel if you put enough sentries up here like if you put one on this side and one on this side and they're not close enough where you could just take them out at the same time I don't foresee anybody capping, it just, it gets so annoying, and just to top it all off, you have a little area to put a dispenser, just, just in case you thought it was too easy to take down the nest, so, yeah, it's just, it's a little stupid, I would love to see this in actual gameplay, just to see how many engineers you could, like, cram in, in the intel room, because I know, like, Normally you have a max of like six or seven before some sentries are just in really bad spots But now that this is open and this is open and this is open You could probably cram your entire team of engineers in here And then finally this provides no gameplay incentive whatsoever to go down here But it's really really cool because it's like this just massive area that you normally can't go and uh, this is the terminal Map of the world with random dots on countries room You know one of those uh, again, not a ton down here, but, I mean, this, like, behind these screens, because these actually are solid, um, this would be a really cool spot to just, like, have a friendly party if you had, like, a, a community server running this. Sentries down here probably wouldn't work, because, I mean, it's pretty easy if you have the high ground to just immediately take them out. Um, but there is also a, uh, little window over here, uh, down to the same room, which is kind of interesting. So that's it for the intel room, and I think in terms of gameplay, that's the other, like, big thing that would change. Like, uh, having the outside completely open is one thing, being able to jump out, uh, onto the, um, the tops of the buildings is the second, and being able to relentlessly defend the intel room is the third. Oh, and then last thing is when you're going up this hallway here, uh, you run into this little, where is it, this little reception desk room. I think you can, yeah, you actually can crouch jump into this one, and uh, uh, you can take people's order like it's McDonald's. I don't know. Uh, there, I can't think of another reason to be in here, honestly. Now, there actually is a couple more changes that I completely forgot about the first time that I recorded this, and um, a couple of them are huge, and I can't believe I forgot them. So, first of all, Red Side Two Fort Courtyard area here is uh, wildly different. Because you can just go around. And I would imagine this makes attacking Red Side of Two Fort a whole lot easier because you can do a whole lot of things to be able to avoid sentries. And I don't believe Blue Side has this at all. Yeah, you should be able to go here. And I just, I did kind of a bad job of being able to fix everything. I guess soldiers can go like up this wall and over, but obviously that's not as good as just being able to run around. So yeah, these back areas actually do affect things. And again, I'd probably end up fixing this and just connecting it if uh, if I were to make this for real, but um, that is a massive change that would uh, completely change up the dynamic of the map that I did not realize. Speaking of things that make red side really dumb that aren't on blue, uh, this door here, I did not know this door was as influential as it was, and I referred to this as an alcove originally, but um, it actually connects an area that you normally can walk through if you crouch jump here. And if this door was not here, you would have a third entrance to Red Side 2 for it. Now again, it would be pretty easy to just like make a little connection here, just remove the tank and uh, like pull out that wall. But yeah, it's interesting that um, Red just has that naturally if you're actually doing the, uh, the thing that I said I was going to do correctly. And finally, I don't know if this one really is as influential, but there's a little bit more behind 2 Fort uh, Blue Side that I don't know if I talked about originally. You can go all the way back here. 
And, um, this roof is actually a thing. And I don't quite know why there's so much area back here that they, like, actually left as contactable surfaces, but it's kind of neat to be able to go all the way back here. Like, this is really untapped territory that I can't believe I forgot the first time around. So yeah, that is it for 2-4. I've rambled far too long about this one, but this one just has, like, a bunch of random nooks and crannies that you can go into, and even though, like, not all of them actually alter the gameplay a ton, it's really cool to just be able to, like, explore every single piece of what the developers design. Like, you can, you can even go up here if you want. Um, I no clipped up here, but it's... Oh, well, I guess never mind. And the second map that I decided to choose is Well, and uh, this is a map that I'm quite familiar with, and you probably are as well if you saw my other video. Um, but this one, I did kind of find there's a lot of stuff that changes when you remove the uh, the invisible walls. Um, now, you can probably tell the immediate difference is that this courtyard area is freaking huge. You can pretty much go anywhere you want, and I'm not... I'm not sure what happened here. But yeah, now instead of having to go through mid, you can either go completely around uh, this way. You still can get hit by the trains. The trains, I think, do still function, even if you're outside of the uh, the playable area. Um, but it means that you don't really have to go straight through mid if you want to cross onto the other side. Now, of course, you can just go up and over as well if you have, like, a rocket jumper, or I think scouts might also be able to do this. Um, I, if I remove this, you actually could shoot down onto mid. This, unfortunately, was not part of the textures that I had originally found and I think that might be a model so that would have been a little bit hard to do but um but yeah assuming these are gone you actually could shoot down onto the middle point from the top of the building which would be um, a bit interesting because it would make this very harvest-esque in terms of stuff outside the playable area in mid this uh, right here is where the skybox starts so you can't really go in here um, you can see there's some weird effects that happen just due to the uh, the misalignments you're never really supposed to get this close to the skybox so that's why uh, that's why this is kind of unaccounted for um, but yeah, anyway, outside of the playable area, there's not really a ton going on here, um, other than the, like, Black Shed of Doom, which has apparently one transparent, one opaque surface on the entire thing. It's just open area that, uh, probably would turn into sniper hell if this was actually a thing. I mean, I guess there are some, like, houses over here. I don't know quite what these do. For some reason, I'm, like, bouncy when I'm on these. I'm not really sure what this thing did when I compiled it. I really had to brute force some stuff. Now, here's another interesting thing. This has nothing to do with a map. It's just, um, when you remove all of the skybox and the occluders and everything, uh, you can pretty much see all of the interior areas of the map, which ends up making this really, really cool looking. And, um, again, I would probably end up patching this up if I, uh, was doing this, uh, part of, like, an actual map and trying to make it, like, playable on a public server. But, uh, just by messing around with stuff it's a little cool insight into how the uh the maps actually work so let's go into red side base first i'm actually going to go up through these because i'm pretty sure without invisible walls you actually can go up through these windows which means that um you don't have to run through the two gates to get directly into the base there are a lot of little cool nooks and crannies that you can go into i think probably the most prominent are these here this little back room uh there's nothing in these top secret doors any doors that are blocking something actually important i have um completely open up but um i don't think this would really affect the map a ton but it's, it's a neat little area that you can go and it kind of allows you to um camp up here a little more i guess another neat room that probably would affect the uh the way the map is played a little bit is this back room and i believe both sides of well have this uh this kind of just adds a little bit more square footage to up top it allows a little bit more of a foundation area for sentry nest to set up um especially like you don't have to put your dispenser out in the middle you can put it like way back here and uh maybe put a teleporter to the enemy base back here i don't know there's a lot of possibilities but but this area does add it basically just doubles the square Square footage of uh, the upstairs and the other room upstairs which I think is actually different for each side is uh, this little side room um, the red side has I guess you can't go down here that's interesting uh, but the red side has this little like staircase area um, which leads up to nothing apparently there's just a random light here or if you want to go in the upper window area there's just a little room here this actually could be a little nice spot to put a sentry assuming it can see all the way down 
Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to cover people coming in and out, uh, just because of the height advantage. Lower red side's pretty similar. I mean, there's this little area too, which again, probably wouldn't end up changing a whole lot, um, but it is just kind of neat to be able to go in there, I guess. I also know that these officially opened up due to the, uh, cross beams. Oh no, I guess you can go in here. This would actually be, I would have to check. I'm gonna go through and... A little bit and check but this would be a really cheesy spot to put a century this is just like perfect coverage of the uh, the second point it's really hard to spot and the only other thing in red side well that is unique to red side well that i can think of is this room in here um i think blue has something similar but this specific room layout is um definitely unique now this could be interesting because if you put a sentry on this table you could see uh, out into both of the hallways which would make it a lot harder to cap down beneath um, this door, I think if you're a scout or something, you probably could just, like, jump over the, uh, the doorway and the sentry wouldn't be able to hit you that many times. Um, but it does provide pretty decent coverage for this hallway. Maybe you could, uh, pair it with another engineer on, uh, this side over here. And then moving on to blue side, well, a lot is similar. Um, I actually forgot to remove this fence, but you can go behind here and it's just a neat little, I guess, dispenser spot. I'm not entirely sure what you do, but this does go back quite a ways, which is kind of interesting that they'd, uh, texture everything back here. But Blue Side Well has a lot of, like, similar areas. They decided to utilize the space in a very similar way, um, as Red Side Well. There actually isn't, like, a, um, a grate up here. You can still go on top of the, uh, little vent ducts, as I pointed out. Um, oh yeah, something that I forgot about in Red Side is these shelves are standable, which, I mean, it doesn't offer a ton of, like, different strats you probably could put a sentry up there and that would probably be really really annoying but yeah blue side has like this little control panel room too i think oh no these aren't connected um it's it's pretty similar to the red side and um i mean you do have this upper sentry area so these actually are a bit more symmetrical than i originally thought which is kind of interesting and you actually can stand on top of these little areas because the invisible walls up there are gone um I don't think you can build anything up here, so this will pretty much just be a spot for, like, ambush pyros or whatever. But it is still kind of cool that you can go, like, up on the rafters and, like... Yeah, holy crap, if this was, like, a prop hunt map, which is kind of what I'm thinking with some of these, is, like, these would be really fun prop hunt maps. Um, there would be so many spots to hide, but... Anyway, uh, let's move back into the rocket room, finally, which is completely identical on both sides, I believe, so I'm not going to review them both. Um, but the rocket room changes, holy crap, quite a bit. Um, it doesn't look like anything changed at first because like most of the stuff is gone other than the uh, the window which got auto removed with what I did but you can go anywhere on this entire area like anywhere up on these shelves this thing is just freaking massive and there's also a cool little area up here which um, just looks down on everything. Again, in terms of practicality, I don't really think this provides anything new because your sentry wouldn't really be able to reach the last point, and that's what's important. But it is still kind of cool just as like a rocket jumping soldier or not to actually be able to explore these upstairs areas um, and kind of run around. Oh, and for anyone wondering when I was doing this, I completely removed the no builds on these uh, little platforms here. So yes, you can now build sentries on these rafters, which you actually can go in the normal maps. So that's going to be really fun but it, man it's just absolutely wild being able to go up here um like i mentioned in the uh, the last video that i did about the uh cp well um i this is one of my favorite maps and um being able to actually explore it in its fullest is really really cool and i'm kind of sad that uh it's not normally like this because this would add so much just like intricate detail to the map all right let me use a command here to see how high up this rocket you can go can you stand on the top Holy crap, I guess if you were just a god at rocket jumping or maybe had like a sticky bomb jumper or something, you can go all the way up here. I didn't know you could actually do that. I didn't know this rocket was solid. That's, um, really cool. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, and then one last detail on uh, the blue side of CP Well that I forgot to mention is the, um, this room. I, I, yeah, the little conference room in between the two hallways is the same, but they actually have a different side room here. And this actually does open up a new route because it connects, um, this, uh, like, this area over here to the center of the hallway. Now, again... I'm not entirely sure how beneficial this route would be, but this is actually a pretty developed room back here, so you could probably set up some cool things in here. 
and um, this probably could get some use in actual gameplay. So in terms of how this map would end up changing, uh, to be honest, it's not a ton. Uh, I chose this map just because I like it. Um, the other maps I chose because there's something interesting. The last room would be a wild trip if you were actually defending because sentries can be literally everywhere and it would be a lot more engineer hell than it normally is. Um, and I think mid would also change a bit too because, I mean, there's a little bit more you can do um like normal characters who don't have jumper weapons um can completely run around the trains now and don't have to go through mid but this is one of those maps that would probably be pretty similar uh to how it's normally played it's just like yeah mid's kind of bigger and last is kind of chokier and they're cool nooks and crannies um but yeah this uh this definitely has some of the most nooks and crannies out of all of them so anyway let's move on to the maps that really really start to become wild when you move some walls around. And the third map that I have done is CP Granary. Now, Granary was one of the first maps that Team Fortress 2 team added to the game. So as you might expect, there's a lot of random stuff that's like out of bounds because they used to put so much detail into everything. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing this. That It's kind of cool, but obviously that's not supposed to happen. I guess as long as it doesn't cause problems, it should be fine. So Granary is normally a pretty choky map because you have to go through a lot of buildings to navigate anywhere you want. But um, if we remove the invisible walls, holy crap, this map is just sniper hell. Like, let's start at mid, for instance. Normally, the only playable area on mid, I took out all the fences too, so um, there would be fences everywhere, and the only places that you could stand are on top of these little uh, ramp platforms here and on top of these uh, crates. However, you can go up the side of this now and stand on top of the buildings and actually just go completely over the buildings to get to the next room. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why this doesn't really matter, but it's really cool to just be able to like go on top of things like this is basically Spider-Man simulator and um, This would actually make a really cool market gardening map now that I think about it, but um, It like yeah, this map just becomes insanely vertical and provides such an advantage to anybody with vertical mobility That it almost just becomes a different map entirely I don't know if I'm the only one who finds just being able to walk on these things that look like they should be walked on really satisfying or what oh No, this door is completely off-centered. Yeah, never mind on the satisfying part frick you valve moving on to the Connector area between mid and the second point. I really don't know what to term this as Again, you can just stand on top of literally everything. It's kind of cool um, But there's not a ton that's really different here other than literally just being able to go on the buildings I think because these buildings are actually a bit lower um, Yeah, really any soldier can go over them and you can actually skip the second point room entirely uh, If you're trying to go straight to last which would actually make defending last a little bit harder because uh, there's more angles that um, People could be coming from but when you look at like the practical gameplay differences other than like okay Maybe soldiers and demo can get up there the uh, the actual playable areas of the map don't change a ton The areas that do change a ton however are the areas that are normally outside of the fences because without the fences you can literally just run all the way from the last point on one side of the map to the last point on the other side of the map Without ever having to go inside of a building without ever having to like, you know, jump I mean you can literally just hold W and you're gonna make it over there in about 15 seconds And um, I'm sure if you're playing like sticky jump or demo man or something or if you're better at rocket jumping than I was You could do this a lot faster but you can do this insanely quick as it is and the fact that it is just a direct path from one point to the other makes the last points Insanely hard to defend and it's on both sides too. I think yeah this side One of the sides I learned was a lot more expansive because they just didn't know what they were doing when they were making the maps But yeah the entire dynamic of this map completely changes and I think the rounds would end up going a whole lot faster because Unlike well or unlike two fort which become more campy this becomes a whole lot harder to defend and uh, Minus my weird voice crack there. I think that it would actually make this a really cool like lightning round map So to speak now before we move on I will look at blue side of granary really quick because it is a little bit different because it has a different aesthetic But I I think uh, in terms of practical standing spaces blue side has it a bit better for defense because I think a sentry spot right here is helping you a little bit more than what was on red, it wouldn't really be different than like a sentry right here or whatever, but um, it's kind of cool, I guess, that you can just have like a flat area to build everything and don't have to like 
cram it onto this pipe. Anyway, let's go inside. I'm like 90% sure nothing actually changes inside, but I want to check to verify that. Uh, inside a granary is pretty compact. It's not like there are like hidden areas or whatever. Like it's just anywhere you'd see you can go. Um, I think windows that were previously there are gone, which might change up sniping a little bit. Um, I'm not the most familiar with uh, how an average round of granary goes, so I could be wrong, but um, I mean, there are minor differences that may affect the diehard granary player's gameplay. But for, I think, all intents and purposes, that is pretty much it with granary. It's actually really, really cool. I'm gonna go back up here, because I, I just want to show this off one more time. Removing all the, like, occluders and stuff allows you to see the entire map at the same time, which is really cool. Like, this is such a cinematic shot of- I'm gonna no-clip, because I can't stay here forever, but- um, this is just, it's such a cinematic shot, being able to, like, see from one end of Granary all the way to the other. And finally, the last map that I have decided to edit is CTF underscore Sawmill. And if you know anything about this map, you probably know why. Sawmill, in my opinion, is one of the worst offenders of invisible walls in the entirety of Team Fortress 2. Like, there are a bunch of areas, like, up on this little, like, thing here. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to go here, but they block it off anyway, and it's like really obnoxious just to have to navigate around. But when you end up removing all of the invisible walls from Sawmill, you can just do this. You can just jump from one side of Sawmill completely to the other. Like, the being able to stand on the top of the middle building makes this map less of a donut and more of a... a pancake? I guess it's like a really lumpy pancake, but... You can go, like, just straight from one area to the other, and I... This grid pattern is really freaking me out, I'm gonna be honest. I mentioned Granary being a really cool Market Garden map, potentially, but I think, like, if I were to run a Market Garden-specific server, this would be the map that I run. Like, just raise the skybox on this, remove the objective, like, maybe block off some of the indoor areas, and, um, you got yourself a really cool way to just kind of duel other players. Okay, other technical changes before I freaking, like, have a seizure. Uh, you can go outside of the map. Not a ton changes by you being able to do this. It adds, like, maybe a, f like, couple feet of square footage on each side of the map. Uh, but what I did learn is that Sawmill is actually shaped like Utah. Um... Okay, this is interesting. I didn't know I was able to be out here. But yeah, Sawmill is shaped like Utah, and because there's like a fence over here, there's like an extra area of land on blue side that's not on red. And it goes back a pretty far ways too. And I seem to have fallen uh, into the void. Holy crap, what is happening? But in terms of actual gameplay changes to the map, because I've kind of just been sitting here with my jaw on the floor, this, these, this is actually the first time that I've ever played on, like, a completely open sawmill. I just hope these all compiled correctly on the first try, and they all did, so cool. Um, but yeah, it just, it really makes vertical mobility important, and, like, scouts and soldiers and demos are gonna be, like, really crazy on, uh, on Sawmill, everyone else just kind of suffers. Maybe Pyros with jetpacks too, but who knows. But before I call it, there are a couple nooks and crannies, and this is probably the most times I've said nooks and crannies, like, ever, um, that you can go into. And first of all is this little room here, I guess, that's normally blocked off by a glass door. I guess this just makes it a sentry spot. I don't know what you'd use that for, because it's like, I don't know how it's different than putting a sentry, like, here. It's really not, but uh, it's somewhere that you can go that you couldn't previously, and there's something to be appreciated about that or whatever. You can go down here. Again, not sure what you do down there. It's just kind of neat. And then there is a little bit in the middle area that gets uh, removed. Sawmill's kind of notorious for being a very asymmetrical map, even though it really should be a symmetrical map. Um, so I'm kind of having to make sure there's, like, stuff on both sides. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, you might notice the hole just straight to the center of Brazil here that, um, has opened up because I removed some of the, uh, the fence textures as well. If you go down here, you can't really get back up. You just have to sit in this, like, weirdly textured hole. I don't actually know why some of these are things, but, um, yeah, you're just, you're just trapped. So, good luck getting that health pack. Hope you aren't on fire on, like, 10 HP. <laughs> And then the last area, which is probably the least climactic possible way I could have ended this video, is the pile of wood room on the red side. 
Wow, I this would actually be interesting because you could put a sentry in here and it would kind of be obscured by the wood pallets So it'd be harder to see and um, if you like put a blue sentry in here and like the red people were running in or I guess any color You could make a uh, strategy work. Um, it would be kind of annoying again I'm not sure why this isn't also on the other side. It's kind of weird, but um Kind of neat that they included that and then of course on the CTF ferry and I did remove the uh, the blockades that allow you to uh, Or that prevent you from going from one side of the map to the other I know that's already a thing on the um, the Koth version, but uh, now you can play sawmill as God intended So anyway, that is sawmill and not only is that sawmill that is this video of removing maps If you want to see this again, this was a lot of fun to do and um, I it, it wasn't easy It did take quite a while for me to actually figure out how to do some of this stuff um, but it is something that I'm up to spending the effort for because I think the results are honestly pretty beautiful um, so if you want to see this let me know what maps you want to see or just tell me like hey this video sucks never do this again I don't care voice your opinions below oh and also let me know if you want me to finish any of these I made really hacky solutions to um, some of these maps oh crap I just wait Oh, that's probably not good. Okay, pause the outro for a minute. I didn't realize this happened, so there's normally a little window on top of the spawn. If you remove that, you can actually just go into red spawn. Um, yeah, that's probably an issue, so that would have to be fixed, uh, but that, that transitions well into what I was going to say, is if you want me to, like, finish any of these and publish them, I'm not super good at it, and it took me a while and, like, a lot of really hacky solutions to figure out how to do, um, but let me know, and I can at least give it a good attempt, and I'll probably only do one, so tell me which one your favorite one, I guess, would be, um, or, or if you're good at map making yourself, you can do this too, and potentially do it better than I did, but that is all comment material, so leave your comments below and make me stop rambling so you can stay cool and have a good one.